Hello, we are continuing our study of percent today. Special applications of percent will focus on the following discount, sales tax, interest, commission, efficient, efficiency, tolerances, and percent change. So a discount is, well, it's a discount. It, it reduces the price of an item. The list price is the normal original price, and the net price is the new reduced price. So the net price would be the list price minus the discount. To find the discount rate, you would take the part over the base equals the rate over 100. And the part is the discount. The base is your list price. And then you have your discounted rate over 100. So for example one, it says the list price of a tool is $18.50. On a special sale, it is offered at 20% off. What is the net price? So, the original price goes on the bottom, $18.50. We're looking for the discounted price, the net price, and it was 20% off. So here we'll cross multiply as usual. D times 100 is 100D. 1850 times 20 is 370, and 370 divided by 100 is three dollars and seventy cents. Now, don't think that that is now the cost of the tool. That would be nice, right? But no, that is just the discount. That was what was taken off. So the net price. is the original price minus the discounted price. That'll be This just said, it says in the previous example, we solved for the discount and then we subtracted this from the list price. We can eliminate step four if we use a pie chart to help us draw a new proportion. Basically, you can take the, instead of putting your discount in the percent spot, you put 100 minus the discount. And you can see that on the next example. So example two says, after a 25% discount, the net price of a five inch random orbit sander is $57. What was its list price? Okay, so the new price is 57, we want to know the original price. So what we can do over here is 25 was the discount, but we're not going to put 25 in there. We're going to put 100 minus 25 or 75 because that will save us a step at the end having to subtract from the original price. So we'll cross multiply. Let me just take this to the next page. So 57 times 100 is 5,700. And 75, that should be a 5, because 100 minus 25 is 75. I'm sorry about that. So 75 times L is 75 L. 5,700 divided by 75 is $76. So the original price of the 
sander was $76. Example 3 says a kitchen sink that retails for $884. Wow, that's an expensive sink. Is offered to a plumbing con contractor for $574.60. What discount rate is the con contractor receiving? Okay, so here we can't just put the 574.60 on top, okay? We have to find the change. So this is, we've got The original price subtracting off the new price over the original. Okay. And we're trying to find the rate. So we end up with 30940 on top, 884 still on the bottom. Nope. Okay, we'll just go up here. So cross multiply, we'd have 30940 like this and 884R. Divide those sides by 884 and the discounted rate was 35%. In some situations, there's multiple discounts, and these di discounts are usually ap applied in succession so that each additional discount is applied to the newly reduced price. So when you go to a store and you see that something is 20% off and then it says, and we took another 35% off, that does not equate to 55%. Okay, so keep that in mind. You're first taking 20 and then you're taking 35. Example four says retail buyers often negotiate two or more discounts from a vendor. Suppose a washing machine has a list price of $740 and the buyer obtains trade discounts of 30% and 10% plus a cash discount of 3%. Okay, so we want to find the new cost of this washing machine. So originally, you've got your new price over the original of $740. And the first discount that we're going to take is the 30% off. So we're going to say 100 minus 30 up here. That'll give us 70 on top. Cross multiply. And the new price is now $518. Okay, we're going to do this again. Except this time we're going to do the 10% discount. So we've got P over the original from before because we're taking the 10% off the one we've already taken the 30% off. So 518 now goes on the bottom. And we're subtracting 10 from 100. Okay, so cross multiply again. And P is $466.20. We're going to do this one more time. Because if this vendor is going to pay in cash, then he can get another, or she, can get another 3% off. So, we 
We are now using for the original price because we're taking off from the 466.20. And we're going to do 100 minus 3%. And so, finally, the price was worth all that calculation because it came down to $452.21. A quick method for calculating percentages it says use, using the proportion method for solving percent problems ma makes it easier to distinguish among the different types of problems. However, it seems that most practical applications involving the percent or part, there's a quicker way to do this. Simply change the percent to a decimal number and multiply by the base. So if we go back and look at this one right here okay notice oh no we don't want to look at that one we need to go all the way back to there notice when you are your when you're cross multiplying you're dividing by 100 so you could just multiply and move the decimal place or move the decimal place and multiply. So you would say point 20 times 1850 and be able to get the same 370. So just going back to look at when we already did to point that out. So example five says find 20% of 640. Again, you can use your proportion if you want to. That would be 20% on top, 100 on the bottom, and of 640, so that goes on the top. But you could also say just since 20% move the decimal place two places to the left is 0 0.20, multiply that by 640, and you would get the same thing as in the proportion, $128. Sales tax is not a discount, it's the opposite. It's adding on. We know that you get you go to buy something and you 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 have twenty dollars and it says it's nineteen ninety nine and you're like oh yeah I can afford it and you get up to the cash register no it's really twenty dollars and fifty three cents anyway so yes tax adds on so as a proportion we would say the sales tax over the list price, it, it gives us our tax rate over 100. So if the retail sales tax rate is 7.75% in a certain city, how much would you pay for a digital multimeter with a list price of $76.50? So we're going to put the list price on the bottom and our percent over 100 and we're looking for the part. So cross multiply 100p is equal to 592.875 divided by 100 and we have $5.93 when we round up. Okay, 
Now, is that the cost of this digital multimeter? I hope I'm saying that right. Um, no, that would be nice. That's the amount that you're paying for tax. So, the total cost is the original cost of $76.50 plus the tax that you're going to have to pay of $5.93. That's $82.43. Just like with the previous, when we were doing a discount, you could subtract the discount from 100 and put that in your proportion. With tax, you could add it to 100 and put that in your proportion and save yourself a step. So just going back to this one, if we were to do that for the previous example, then, since it didn't show us an example, we would say 100 plus 775 over 100 here. And then we would end up with the same 82.43 without having to add on at the end. So just to point that out. Interest. Interest is the amount that the lender is paid for the use of his or her money. So if you take out a loan to borrow money from a bank, from a person, from whomever, then they are most likely going to charge you interest on that. They're going to charge you for borrowing the money from them. Principal is the amount of money lent or borrowed. So you might borrow $500 and have to pay 2% interest, something like that. Simple interest can be calculated using this formula, or these two formulas, actually. You have the actual interest over the principal is equal to the annual interest rate over 100 and so the total interest would be the annual interest times the time in years. So example seven says, suppose that you have $5,000 in a long-term CD, earning 1.25% interest annually in your local bank. So this isn't a loan. This is something where you've invested money and you're actually going to gain. How much interest do you receive in a year? Okay. Well, we have our interest over your amount, $5,000. And the rate is 1.25%. We don't have to change that to a decimal because we're putting it over 100. Cross multiply. And the amount of interest accumulated was $62.50. Now, because this is one year, we don't have to multiply by one, as it said in this formula here. Okay? Okay because multiplying by one would just get us the same thing. So this is, in fact, the amount of interest that would accumulate in one year. If it were more than a year, then we'd multiply. If it's five years, we'd multiply by five. What about if it's nine months? So we've got the interest over the amount invested. 1.25 over 100. And you would still get up, get the same amount. The interest is $62.50. This says nine months. 
Well, nine months is how much of a year? Three-fourths. Well, let's write that out. Nine out of 12. If you divide the top and bottom by three, then you would get three-fourths, or as a decimal, 0.75. So if we take 62.50 and multiply by 0.75, then we get the total interest. And so after nine months, you're earning a little bit less, $46.88. You can read through this on your own about how credit cards work. So you can pause there and read through that if you like. Uh, I think you know, have an idea of how they work. They charge you interest. Um, commission. Salespeople are often paid on the basis of their success at selling and receiving a com and selling, excuse me, and receive a commission or share of the sales or receipts. And it's usually described as a percent of the income. So the commission would go over the sales, and that would equal the commission rate over 100. So for example eight, it says, suppose your job as a lumber broker pays 12% commission on all sales. How much do you earn from a sale of $4,000? So the commission that you earn will go on the top, and the sales price on the bottom, and you've got 12 out of 100. So again, we're going to cross multiply, divide by 100, and you would gain $480 from this sale. A computer salesperson is paid a salary of $800 per month, plus a 4% commission on sales. What amount of sales must he generate in order to earn $40,000 per year in total compensation? So let's see. His salary is $800 per month. So that would be 800 times 12 months or $9,600 per year. Not a whole lot. So I hope he sells a bunch. He wants to make $40,000. So how much does he need on commission? Well, the commission... minus, excuse me, would equal $40,000 minus the $9,600 from his salary. So his commission would have to total to $30,400 in the year. And so the question was, how much does he have to sell? So now we're going to go and put that into our formula, into our proportion. The commission, 30400 How much does he have to sell? That's what we're looking for. He gets 4%. Commission, and so now we need to solve our proportion. So cross multiply. We'll have 4s and 3,400 and then two zeros. 
and divide by 4. He's got to sell $760,000 in computers. I hope he can do that. Loans, here's some information on how loans work. I'm not going to spend the time to read through that, so you can pause and read through that for yourself. Efficiency, when energy is converted from one form to another in any machine or conversion process, The efficiency of a process is a fraction comparing the energy or power output to the energy or power input. And so we say output over input equals the efficiency over 100. So our example, an auto engine is rated at 107 horsepower, I think that's what that's standing for, and is found to deliver only 140 horsepower to the transmission. So what is the efficiency of this process? We'll take the output, which was 140, over the input, 175, and that's gonna tell us our efficiency. Cross multiply, we'll have 175E equals 14,000. Divide 14,000 by 175, and the efficiency of this engine is at 80%. Tolerance. On technical drawings or other specifications, measurements are usually given with a tolerance showing the allowed error. For example, in this fitting, its length could be add, could you could add 15 thousandths of an inch or subtract that and it still be an okay fitting. then tolerance can also be written as a percent. So the tolerance over the measurement is equal to the percent tolerance over 100. So example 11 says to rewrite 1.37 plus or minus 0 0.015 inches with a percent tolerance, substitute into the proportion equation and solve. So, we have our tolerance. That was 15 thousandths of an inch over 1 and 37 hundredths of an inch. Again, cross multiply. So we'll have 1.5 is equal to 1.37 R. Divide both sides by 1.37. And we get 1 and 9 hundredths percent is what that tolerance could be. Example 12 says the dimension 315 plus or minus 25 hundredths of a millimeter can be converted to prevent percent tolerance also. So we would say again the tolerance 0.25 over the measurement 315 would it be equal to the rate over 100. and we get 0.08%. So 
this only has a tolerance of eight hundredths of a percent. And then last question. To convert two and forty five hundredths inch plus or minus twenty or <laughs> two tenths of a percent to a dimension value. Note that the measurement is 2.450 inches. The percent tolerance is 0.20. And the actual tolerance is unknown. So we're looking for the actual tolerance. The measurement was 2.450. We can stick that in there. The percent is 0 0.20 over 100. And that is 0.49. Divide by 100, and we have 0 0.0049, or we could round that a bit because that's extremely detailed, to five hundredths of an inch. So this measurement, could we could add or subtract five thousandths, so that's not hundredths, thousandths of an inch. Oh, I just thought that was the last part. Okay, percent change. In many situations and technical work in the trades, you may need to find a percent increase or percent decrease in a given quantity. And we kind of touched on this earlier. So you would put the amount of the increase or decrease over the original amount, and then the percent of the increase or decrease over 100. So example 14 says, suppose the output of a certain electrical circuit is 20 amperes and the output increases by 10%. What is the value of the output? So the input, that's I, over the output, 20, and it says it increases by 10%. So, the input would end up being 2 amps. So, the new value would be our original 20 amps plus 2, 22 amps. As we learned with sales tax, a quicker way is to do this. We can, like back on this example, instead of having to add at the end, we could have just, since it increased, we would have said 110 there, okay? So you can add or subtract your percent increase or decrease. Suppose that the output of a certain machine at the Acme Gidget Company is 600 gidgets per day. I wonder what a gidget is. If the output decreases by 8%, what is the new output? So we've got however much it's decreased over the original 600. And I'm going to work this both ways. So you would take 8% over 100. And when you cross multiply, you find that the discount or the amount of gidgets we lost per day was 48. So at this point, you would find your new value by saying the original 600, subtracting out the 48 less that you are creating, and get that we are now just making 552 gadgets per day. 
You could also work this by saying D over 600 equals, we're, take, we're using less, so you would say 100 minus 8 on top, or 92. And it would get you the same 552 digits, whichever way you prefer. And that's what we just did. <laughs> okay, example 16 says, if the reading on a pressure valve increases from 300 PSI to 36 PSI, the percent increase by, can be found using a proportion. So, how much did we increase by? To find an increase, we need a positive number. So, we're taking 36 minus the 30 over the original 30. And that will be our whatever rate we find over 100. So that, once we subtract, we've got 6 over 30 equals R over 100. So 30R equals 600. Or R is 20%. So this pressure valve increased by 20%. Okay, two more examples and we will be done. During the recent drought in California, certain water districts were required, requiring residents to reduce their water usage by specific amounts. The Jones family lived in a district that required residents to reduce their monthly usage by 30% compared to their average for the prior year. It'd be hard to figure out. Suppose their prior year average was 36,400 gallons per month, and they reduced their usage to 26,800 gallons per month for the first quarter of the current year. To determine whether or not they've met the district's goal, we'll set up a percent decrease proportion. So the original amount that they were using was 46,400 gallons. And we're going to subtract off what they're using now, 26,800 gallons. We put that over the original. And we'll look for the percent decrease over 100. Subtract. That'll be 9,600 on top now. Cross multiply. Divide by 36,400. And we get 26.36%. So they've reduced their water usage by about 26%. They were told to do it by 30%, so they haven't reduced it by quite enough. That would be hard to figure out just how much less water do you need to use in your shower, for your cooking, to drink. Oh, my goodness. Students are also often confused about which number to use for the base in percent change problems. This difficulty usually arises when they think in terms of which is bigger or smaller. Always use the original value in the base. Notice I said that on the past two problems. Put the original on the bottom. Okay, last example. A house purchased for $400,000 during the housing boom decreased in value by 30% during the recent housing slump. By what percent must it now increase in value in order to be worth its original purchase price? Well, 
you would think that it would just need to increase by 30% to go back up. But it's gone down. And now the percentage from that lower amount to get back up is greater. So, the decrease... Over the original amount, 400000 was 30% out of 100. So we're first finding out how much did it decrease by, okay? So once we cross multiply and divide, we find that it decreased by $120,000 because it's 30% less. So the value is now $400,000 minus $120,000 or the value of the house is $280,000. So how much does it need, to, what, by what percentage does it need to increase to go back up? Well, now our original is 280000 And it decreased by 120000 We already know that. It's already been subtracted for us. And so now we'll find the percent that it needs to increase, go back up. So when we cross multiply and divide, it ends up being 43%. So while the house only decreased by 30%, now you have to take 43% of that lower number to get back up. And I think that concludes us. You can read through that if you like. It's calculator hints. Okay. And so this lesson is finally done. I hope you have a great day.